So I just have to keep us all on the same page. It's so important to me about certain topics. And today, that's what I intend to do. I want to bring you full circle update on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Garcelle's racist bots, you know, that tried to take out her son last season. What's going on with all of that from the many different perspectives? I then want to move on and I want to quickly tell you what Kyle Richards' uh, updated statement said, which we all kind of knew, but I just want to make sure you're aware of it. And then lastly, I want to tell you Brandy Glanville's secret. <laughs> okay, you're not going to believe this. And as always, like, subscribe, and hit the notification button, and join our wonderful group in the Patreon. We have almost 800 people, all sleuths, all know every little detail about everything. It's fab in there. Um, and I love all of you who are Patreons. It makes my day to try to come up with stuff you haven't heard of so that I can trump last week's episode. It's like a full one. It takes me hours. <laughs> Now I'm going to put a link to Buzzsprout in all the listening platforms you can hear Dishing Drama Dana. We do not do video. We only do audio on my podcast because I want people to really think about what they're talking about instead of looking at themselves. So I do it for a very particular reason. Anyway, anyway today I dropped episode 139. An insider's sex tape stories, Meghan Markle, allegedly, Portia Williams, oh yeah, Paris Hilton, Kevin Hart, Pam Anderson, Kim Kardashian. And this is, of course, featuring Kevin Blatt, Hollywood's fixer and breaker <laughs> in some cases. And Kevin also is a, a, a man around town. He's been involved with a lot of scandals, but, you know, he's a really nice guy and you, you should definitely listen to this episode. I did release 45 minutes of the hour and a half free of that one. And, and then, then episode 138 is Kim Kardashian ruined my life and 10 Kardashian business scandals. By the way, if you haven't heard, she's trying to raise $4 billion right now for her Skims clothing through hedge funds. And so that's kind of interesting. And, and that episode 138 featured David Liebenson, who had his, his patent pending software kind of taken from him by the Kardashians. I don't want to oversimplify it. You have to hear the episode. And I did release some of his story for free out there too, if you want to sample it. But I promise you what's in the Patreon is so well worth it. The Patreons on here will tell you. I know I look like crap. It's raining here and I was in the rain, so I apologize. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so let's first listen to what Garcelle Bouvet said on Watch What Happens Live. I noticed the video of this was posted on a few of the better known blog sites that covers housewives, and the video was pulled down for some reason. I wonder if Diana requested that from Watch What Happens Live. See, this is what I mean. Anyway, let me let you hear what she says. There was a big... Um deal at the last reunion where diana was going to be looking into all these bots and she was doing this huge investigation mm -hmm. have you heard from her at all since we filmed that day and she was going after this information no <laughs> so there's been no result of that no there's we came no really close but at, in the end no but in my heart of hearts I know who's behind it, but I will never say publicly. You think it was her? No, I mean, I think it was multiple people. You do? I do. Wow. And at the reunion, I did accuse other people, but that wasn't shown. It only shown Diana, so therefore, ooh, I said her name. <gasps> A peppermint's reaction. Peppermint's gagging. <laughs> I do think Garcelle also believed that Lisa Renna and maybe even Erica Jane had something to do with it because their Diana, Erica, and Lisa were friends off the show, at least during that season. So I think she said maybe everybody was in cahoots or something like that. Now, I was told up and down that Lisa Renna did not participate in that. And although that weird guy, Oliver, 
came out of the woodwork with like a whole elaborate story. He was debunked several times on many of his stories as just like a clout chaser, you know, to try to get followers, which worked by the way. He's got, I think a hundred thousand followers. Oh, bullshit, <laughs> but that's what he's got. All right, now you probably thought that was juicy, but what's really juicy is that when Garcelle answered in the way she did to Andy Cohen's question, it became clear that Diana Jenkins had released a lie, I guess, to the media because Diana Jenkins claimed that she reached out to Garcelle just a few months ago and said, do you wanna join my lawsuit against the bot people that we think did this to your son and Garcelle supposedly didn't respond. However, based on this, Garcelle saying she never was reached out to by Diana, so could it all be a lie? So Let this is from you. Reality Blurb, dated May 12, 2023. Of course, Lindsay Cronin wrote it. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, Diana Jenkins dismisses lawsuit to discover bot who cyberbullied Garcelle Bouvet's son. Details revealed and why she's dropping it. In her court filing on Wednesday, which Radar Online obtained on May 11, Diana said that after the court expressed concerns that she wasn't the right person to lead the lawsuit, her team reached out to Garcelle's lawyer to ask if, quote, she would join the lawsuit as plaintiff. But while Diana offered to cover all her legal expenses, meaning Garcelle, in connection with the suit, she did not receive a response from Garcelle. Okay, Gar what did Garcelle say in the last interview? She said she never was reached out to by Diana. So someone's lying. Diana, who's currently pregnant, also reached out to NBC Universal, the parent company of Bravo, and informed NBC Universal regarding her efforts to identify the perpetrators, but also received no response. <laughs> oh boy, I'd say that bridge is burnt. But what I'm gonna say here is obviously, I don't know what you believe, and I'm gonna leave it open for you to contemplate. So as you can see, we have two different stories given the date of when Diana Jenkins dismissed the lawsuit because Garcelle would have said at this point, I've spoken to Diana and she told me that she wanted me to join her lawsuit and I didn't respond. She didn't say that. She said she never received any reach out from Diana since the reunion shooting. So I don't know. Somebody's Diana lying. Jenkins also settled her lawsuit with NT lawyer from Crazy Days and Nights. NT wrote this. She was going to out uh, him, I guess, on who he is. And, and so he just decided to settle. And this was what he said, which I'm sure he believed too, or he wouldn't have said it. Diana is not, nor do I now believe she has ever been involved in illegal or immoral activity. He said on his blog, I regret contributing to this false narrative and I apologize to Diana and her family for the harm my statements have caused. Jenkins has dismissed the lawsuit. She posted a statement on Instagram on Tuesday, this is in late January, saying that she's looking forward to putting the situation behind her. Quote, this was a painful and expensive process, but fighting misinformation and bullying online is something I'm passionate about, she said. The lawsuit sought to reveal the true identity of NT Lawyer, who has been blogging at the Crazy Days and Night sites since 2006. NT Lawyer said that he used his pseudonym to protect himself from threats and harassment and argued that he has a First Amendment right to anonymity. There were quite a lot of very popular posts on NT's site regarding Dinah Jenkins and blinds. So I also know he removed all of those as well as part of the settlement. Kyle Richard posted this yesterday on her Instagram. I listened to my heart and it was a post about being sober for one year. I'm sure that Morgan Wade uh, helped her through this difficult time of becoming sober. It sounds like she had a lot of anxiety when she drank uh, in the aftermath of the hangover in her actions that she would later regret. I'm sure it's not a coincidence that she went sober a year ago, which is when Mauricio and her seem to have begun their split of separation. So there's obviously some trigger event that has occurred here on both sides. Now you may remember that Brandy Glanville uh, made allegations that Mauricio was cheating on Kyle Richards and that she had heard that in the grapevine all the way back from season three. And she repeated it, I think, in season four too. And this was like a thing she did. And I 
went out for dinner with Brandy Glanville one night and she was telling me that she had heard rumors that Mauricio cheated on Kyle. And I was like, I've never seen anything like that, about that, et cetera. But I guess what I didn't know at the time was she is apparently friends with Elsa Jean. Elsa Jean is a famous porn uh, star ex escort. Elsa Jean is also linked to hooking up with Mauricio five times in paid transactions through the gossip mills. There's been some friends of Elsa Jean from the porn industry that have dropped that T around. And whether it's true or not, I can't comment. But what I will say is that it's very interesting to me that the person that brought out Mauricio's cheating to Kyle, in her own words, Elsa Jean's own words, love my bestie, Brandy Glanville. So could it be that Elsa Jean uh, was telling Brandy Glanville about these escapades of Mauricio way back then? And that's why she felt confident enough to say it on the show. I'm starting to wonder. Anyway, Elsa Jean was very excited to announce that she is coming out with an OnlyFans collab with Brandy Glanville. Looks like Brandy Glanville is going to be doing a sexy OnlyFans where she pretends to be your girlfriend. So if you're into having a pretend girlfriend like what Larsa Pippen does, and you know, then Brandy is now available for you to have a pretend girlfriend situation with her. Anyway, I'll show you a clip now. I don't have any you don't have to be the one. What are you doing? I don't know. Where, where are you going? Help! Help her! Taking my girlfriend in and, like, girlfriend, not like girlfriend, woman. I'm just like, friend, girlfriend, out for her birthday dinner. We're gonna have some Italian food, a little wine, and then I'm gonna get home and get on. Let's go back to this tweet for a second. This is from Elsa Jean's Twitter. Love my new bestie at Brandy Glanville. Go check out her OnlyFans. She's new to OnlyFans and a babe. We're going to shoot content together. Oh, yeah. So they're going to sell like lesbian content together, I think. But that's me just guessing. And I'm speculating based on Brandy Glanville's last video, obviously. So I guess it may be true. Brandy may not be invited back to NBC shows because of what happened with Caroline Manzo. So she's got to come up with other revenue streams beyond the podcast. This was pretty shocking to me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this filter is hilarious. Because this would mean that Brandy Glanville likely got this intel on Mauricio from Elsa Jean or one of her good friends that's been leaking tea all around town about her and Mo. So I'm just saying, wow. By the way, I did a video showing you that tea two weeks ago in the Patreon on Saturday, if you wanna go check it out, if you missed that So one. it would appear that NT might have noticed Brandy Glanville hanging out with Elsa Jean around town at you know rich guy events and the like, and that's where he got the insight for this particular blind, number six. This former West Coast housewife has been hooking up with guys for money and is not even being coy about it. Expenses need to be paid, so this is the way she is choosing to supplement her appearance income, which is minimal these days. And then it, it's Brandy Glanville. Kevin Blatt's episode part one is out. Kevin Blatt is going to be coming on the show again for a part two. And a story exists about Elsa Jane that will give you some insight into what I'm talking about in this video if you guys are in the Patreon. All right. Take care. That's it for now. I've got to go do a show. I love you guys. Mwah. Have, Have a great a Monday and Tuesday. John's doing a commercial, so I probably won't be back on here till Wednesday, Thursday. All right. Bye. I'll be in the Patreon though.